Hey everybody, I'm Chris. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you're a returning subscriber. If you are, thank you so much for coming back to my corner of the internet. Today it's all about the trending cloud makeup. So if you'd like to see what I use to create a cloud look, stay exactly where you are because we're getting into it right now. According to realsimple.com, in a nutshell, cloud skin is a softly mattified makeup that doesn't look dull or flat, but that also doesn't have the bright, dewy, or highlighted reflection we've been seeing so much of recently. According to all of the TikToks I've seen, that sounds like a true definition of cloud skin. Really all it is is matte skin with a little bit of an ethereal glow to it to give it that soft focus finish. So first and foremost, and I feel like this is the most important part of the cloud skin trend, especially if you have dry skin, is skincare or priming. And with dry skin, I strongly recommend a moisturizer. Specifically for me today, it's gonna be the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Rich face base I say today like it's uncommon I don't use it I use this almost every day that I do my makeup it's just that good I'm not using a huge amount really it's just enough to apply a thin layer to the neck and face Whew, that is so cold it's been sitting in my cold studio for two days. By the way, I did have all of my skincare already completed. If you would like to see a video on my current skincare routine, just let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to provide. With the face base down, we've got a really nice, soft focus glow to the skin. It's not super dramatic. It's not reflective per se. It's just like a healthy lit from within glow. This next step I would only recommend if you've got dry skin. If you've got normal to oily, it will probably be too much hydration for you, so beware. This is the Physician's Formula Argan Oil, and I'm only going to use about three drops because again, a little bit of this goes a long way. I like to spread it around in my hands first so it gets really nice and warm. Also, it mixes with the face base that was left on my hands to give it a little more of an emollient so it spreads easier. And now just pressing this into the skin all over. Quick tip for oils, always use them last in your skincare routine. Oil can penetrate through most other products, but most other products cannot penetrate through oil. We're gonna give that just a few minutes to dry down. Okay, so we've got our lit from within glow all over the face. Now we need to mattify. For that, we're using the One Size Secure the Blur Makeup Magnet Primer. I love this primer so much, not only for its blurring properties, but because it has niacinamide in it, so it's helping with pore size and fine lines while you're mattifying. Now, as you can see with the skin, we still have that ethereal glow underneath, but the skin is mattified. You don't have any kind of hardcore shine. There's no super intense reflection reflection, but it still looks healthy. It doesn't look flat. And I feel like that's the most important part of cloud skin is to not make it flat, but not make it luminous either. Another really important part of the cloud makeup trend are the complexion products you choose. For instance, your foundation. It shouldn't be super luminous or dewy. It should be either a matte or soft matte foundation. Same with your concealers, your powder, your blush, obviously not your highlight because the highlight is going to be radiant and glowy no matter what. But most of the posts I've seen seen with cloud makeup usually don't have any highlight. They're just using that natural lit from within glow that they have on their cheekbones to give them that highlighted effect. Another thing I've seen with a lot of the videos is they typically add in their mattifying primer to the foundation. I did sort of a trial run with this method the other day and I ended up using what I'm pretty sure was a very expired primer. I used the Becca Evermatte Poreless Priming Perfector and when I added this to the foundation it just sucked all the life out of my skin. I did the same skincare routine, the same prepping products, but it left me looking a little dry. I will say I didn't get like patchy or anything. It didn't look bad per se. It just didn't look great. So I decided to stay away from this one this time, especially for the fact that I don't think you can even get this anymore. If you can, it would be available from Smashbox, but I don't know that you can. But regardless, I'm not gonna mix my primer with the foundation. I feel like as long as you take care of the mattifying properties with your skincare and your primer beforehand, you shouldn't need to mix it with your foundation. For foundation, I'm using the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. This should give us that cloud-like skin effect with just a little bit of radiance since it's soft matte. Also, the coverage of this foundation is amazing. So it's gonna cover all the problems from today, from yesterday, from last week, it'll cover all of it. Just to forewarn you guys, using all these matte products, products will dry down faster. Your foundation, your blush, your contour, literally everything. So 
blend quickly. How about we show a little more skin so I don't get foundation all over my collar. And if you use a foundation that is this full coverage, please pull it down on your neck and go around your ears and even a little bit on your ears. For me, I'm so hot right now that all of my skin just looks red. And I promise I'm light medium with a neutral undertone, but that comes out more when I'm tanned and I am not tan, not even a little bit. My arm is tired from blending. Then after all the coverage is built up with a brush, I like to go in with a sponge just to pat everything out and help it melt into the skin a little bit better. With the foundation built up, now we need some concealer. And again, you should choose a matte or a luminous matte or a soft matte finish. For today, since I use the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation, why not use the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer? But I'm mixing two shades. I've got the shade Light 1 Chantilly and Light 2.3 Madeline. I made it about two shades lighter than my foundation shade. That way it could give me a little bit of a highlighting effect as well, since I'm probably not gonna have a literal highlight. And again, just gonna blend that in with the sponge. Wow, I already didn't have an upper lip. Now I really don't have an upper lip. I look like Bambi. Oh, that's cute. Wow, oh, it takes so much longer to blend matte products. My arm is sore. Now at this point of the process, I'm going to go in with all of my cream complexion products. If you have super oily skin, I would probably skip this step and just move directly on to powders, which we'll get to in a second. But for all my dry skin girlies, here we go. For bronzer, I'm using the Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzer. Mine's in the shade 03 Macchiato. And I'm not showing you the inside of this thing because it is gross. <laughs> I like to use this really angled triangle shaped brush for this because it gives you a nice flat edge and a big area that you can apply the product with. That's just my personal preference. You can use whatever brush you want. But you see how I can get that nice sharp line all the way down and I don't have to go back in and clean it up again because it's already nice and clean. Mwah, chef's kiss. Make sure we hit that temple really well and pull up all the way to the forehead. Now because this is bronzer and not necessarily a contour, although you can use your bronzer as a contour kind of, if it's the right color. I don't want this to be as precise as a contour would be, so I'm using the sponge just to blend it out and give it a little bit of a wider area to cover so that it looks more like my skin has been sun-kissed rather than contoured, if that makes any kind of sense to you. And if I notice any areas that I need just a little bit more coverage with the bronzer, I can just take my sponge directly into it with this really hard angle on the sponge and line things up the way I want. Then just flip the sponge over and blend out those edges. Now for my actual contour, I'm using the Milani Conceal and Perfect Contour in the shade 02 Ginger. This is just gonna be used to help add a little bit more dimension and help deepen those points in my face that I want to appear more hollow or recede to the background. Honestly, with the warmth this shade has, I probably could have used it as my contour and bronzer, but I just wanted a little bit more more emphasis on the contour aspect just to show what that dimension actually does for the skin. And something to note for the application and blending is I'm only patting. There is absolutely no swiping happening, especially since the oil was the last thing I put on my face before the primer. I don't want to have anything move around at all. Mm. See, just to look at that, how much it creates that angle and makes my cheekbone just pop up at the highest point. Oh, I love it. I love this because you can already tell why it's called cloud skin. Just look at the soft focus that my skin has and the tiny bit of that lip from within glow that's still there even though everything is mattified. My hair is looking extra ridiculous right now. It looks like I was struck by lightning. Now for blush, we're gonna use the Glossier Cloud Paint. This is in the shade Puff. No, I did not pick it because it said cloud paint, but Maybe that will help us in the end. Ooh, that was way too much. This is probably not how much you'll need, but I like to put it on the back of my hand first so it can start to warm up a little bit. That way it will melt into the foundation just a little bit easier. And this blush has zero luminosity as far as I could ever tell any time I've worn it, so it should stay true to our matte finish. I'm just applying to the high points of my cheek first, then pulling it down to the apples. I like to lift my face instead of making my cheeks look more rounded, hence why I prefer this application technique instead of starting at the apples and pulling up. Also going to take some across the bridge of my nose as well as the chin and a little bit above the temples. And using the clean side of my sponge, if you even have one at this point, I'm just going to press all of that into the skin and smooth out 
any texture that might have come up from using the blush with a brush. Now obviously you can already tell why this is called cloud skin. I mean it's it's obvious to me anyway. It's soft. It's got that soft focus finish. There's a little bit of luminosity but it's puffy. Looks very silky, very smooth, but I feel like the magic part that really makes it cloud skin is the setting powder. And for today's loose powder, we're using the Gerard Cosmetics Slay the Bake Setting and Sculpting Powder. Gotta make sure we blend out any creasing that might have happened under the eyes before we set it or else we're gonna be locking in all of those creases. And after you blend those out before you do anything else, grab your little powder puff with some powder on it or brush or whatever you like to use and just set under the eyes and any places you you prefer to highlight. So for me, that's down the side of the nose, lower on the center of my face, and I like to pull it up into an angle like this. I love how it looks like I'm wearing pink eyeshadow when that's just my eye color. Now because I set the under eyes with the O face like that, so I stretch out the under eye skin, that increases the amount of creasing that I've got in the forehead because I'm lifting the forehead. So I like to press that out as well, especially the little 11s right between the eyebrows. I mean, I still have them. They're still going to be there after I set them, but I like to smooth it out as much as possible before I set it. That way they are extremely minimized in comparison. Oh, I keep moving my forehead when I talk. And down the center of the lip and chin. Do not inhale. The reason why I don't take a loose powder all over my face is because I'm dry, and especially since we're doing a lot of mattifying products, I really don't wanna use a loose powder everywhere. So to set the rest of my face, I'm using the Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour Hybrid Foundation. You can literally use any pressed powder that you want at this point if you are dry. I just like this one because it gives just a little bit more coverage as well as looking super cloud-like. I mean, just look at what happens on one side of the face. Do you see? Do you see the cloud coverage that it gives? It's so soft and smooth and blurring. I love it. And there we have it. One half set, one half unset. Everything is flawless and set and powdered and locked in for the day, but I've lost a lot of the color to my face. I've still got a lot of the dimension because using those cream products creates a really nice base, but we need to go back in and add some of that color and dimension back in that was lost with some of the powdering products. So I'm pretty much going to repeat the exact same thing I did with the cream products, but with powder products. And for powder bronzer, I'm using the one size made for shade bronze and sculpt trio. For today's look, I'm using the shade don't try it. I've not used this big fluffy fan brush in such a long time, but I really wanted to get a nice diffused bronze, something that wasn't too targeted and exact, and I feel like this is really gonna help me get that. Just the last time I used it, the brush is so dense that it grabbed way too much product, so I'm trying to be sparing this time. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm trying. Ooh. I never used just this bottom color and I really like it. And I'm using the same application method here as I did before with the creams. I'm patting, not swiping. Oh yes, immediately it's so much better. Don't you just love a good powder bronzer? Then with whatever bronzers remaining on the brush, I just like to go over the bridge of my nose, the chin, and down the neck. Aside from the neck, it's pretty much everywhere the sun's gonna hit naturally and just bronze up your skin. Also, if you're like me and you haven't quite let the sickness weight drop from your body, you know, the big sickness, you can also take a little bit of bronzer and go just on the outer sides of your throat and it adds just a little bit of shadow on both sides, giving your neck a more lifted appearance and it makes your neck look longer and more slender. Now we get to actually contour and this is gonna add the most dimension to the face, making us look a little more sculpted, a little more snatched, if you will. So the bronzer adds the warmth. Now we need a cool tone to sculpt with. And for that, my favorite is the Scott Barnes Contour Palette. You have so many cooler shades you can work with, but you've also still got a couple of warmer shades and even some that lean a little more olive, so it can work with just about any skin tone. On a much smaller defined brush, I'm using the shade Carved. And this shade's going on the lowest points of my cheekbone. Now I am swiping with this product, but I'm using the lightest touch. I mean, I can barely feel it tickling my skin. And I'm just gonna start diffusing that upward. And immediately, I'm more snatched and lifted. 
And just like that, we've got dimension back on the skin. Now it's time for blush, so we can add a little bit of color to these cheeks. For powder blush today, we're using the Lunar Beauty Moon Prism Blush Palette, and I'm using the shade Pink Moon. And I love how Manny MUA got the trendy pink blush before it was a trendy pink blush. And I'm just adding this shade everywhere I added the cream blush. Again, across the bridge of the nose, and the chin, and right above the temples. And finally, to lock everything in, I'm using the NYX Matte Finish Setting Spray. Oh, she's got a couple little squirts coming off. Oh, that's so cold. But it feels so good. Now we just let this dry a bit. So here's my take of the cloud makeup trend. What do you guys think? I actually think it's a really nice mix of like old school 2016 super dried out matte no reflection skin along with the 2021 glazed donut trend where it's like super reflective, really dewy, really glossy. It feels like a healthy version of the super matte 2016. Really, I feel like that's what 2016 should have been instead of just sucking all the moisture out of your skin. I love it though. I think it's really good for my skin type since we were able to add in some of that healthy hydration underneath, but we could still use mattifying products on top of it to help pull everything back a bit and give it that really nice soft focus blur. In my opinion, it's the perfect complexion to have for like flash photography events, like for prom or a wedding or really anything, especially in studio lighting. I feel like whenever the light bounces off the skin, it just makes that blur so much more ethereal looking, but it still leaves that lit from within glow. I just love it. It looks like I put on a soft focus like hourglass highlighter, even though it's really just the skincare. Anyway, guys, that's enough from me and my opinions. Let me know yours in the comments. You guys know that I always love to hear from you down there. Let's talk about it. I hope you enjoyed the video trying out this cloud makeup trend. If you did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up just to let me know you enjoyed it. Also, if you like this look and you want to see more looks like them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok. My username is the same for everything. It's just Christopher JMUA. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!